This is a continuation of the, uh, the mold and cavity that we did earlier uh, where we were creating a mold for the fittings uh, that we have. Uh, this is the same one that we were working on. So now what we want to do is basically machine this out. Uh, we have a uh, package that works inside SolidWorks that uh, Secret carries. It's called CamWorks. And we're simply going to go in. Uh, it works inside of SolidWorks. So we're going to go into our add-ins. And we're going to go down and tell it that we want to turn on CamWorks 2010 and CamWorks 2010 Utilities and click OK. Now it takes just for a second for it to kick in. You see that the logo pops up. And we actually have two different tabs now at the top of our feature manager. So if we go to that CamWorks tab, uh, it automatically starts off with a stock manager, an example million, which we can go in there and change and customize accordingly. Uh, and uh, configurations. Well, this particular configuration is the 31300 that we've got, so we're going to leave that like it is. But what we have to do now is we have to mill this part. So let's get started. The first thing we have to do is we have to insert a mill part setup. We've got to know where our z-axis is and which direction we're going to go. Uh, right now, you see that that z-axis is set at the front plane. Well, we, we actually want it to be set here at the top. So we want to start uh, milling this at the top of this face here. So we'll click OK to, uh, uh, to accept that. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to try to uh, use our CamWorks toolbar and see whether or not it extracts any machinable features. Now this extracts most holes, most uh, pockets and things, but in this case, uh, we're going to try it here. Let's see what happens. It looks like it's trying, but it did not find anything that it recognized. This is kind of an odd shape, but like I said, in most cases, it finds most pockets and most holes and uh, that kind of thing. So it's usually pretty uh, thorough. So let's uh, let's go back. Let's add that uh, part setup in there again. It went away, and this time. Let's go in there and let's, uh, let's add a multi-surface feature. Now when we add a multi-surface feature, SolidWorks, or CamWorks in this case, is good to uh, ask us, okay, what do you want to cut? What faces do you want to cut? Well, it's a lot easier to pick here to select all than it is to just go through there and pick the ones that we want. Then, just with SolidWorks uh, functionality, Selecting it again actually turns it off. So we can select these faces and turn them off. This face, this face, uh, this one, and this one. And then we, that's all the faces that we want to turn off. And these are the faces we want in the meal. Okay, so we've got all those faces in there now. Now, the next thing SolarWorks gives you is it actually gives you the ability to go in and pick a program that you want to run. Now, these are all in here already automatically. Uh, you can see here that there's quite a few in here to go from, uh, uh, that you can pick from. Uh, you can do a rough pocket semi-finished slice, and that's exactly what we're going to do here, finish slice. You can do a pin trace after the finished slice. You can just do a coarse and a fine if you wanted to. You can do a rough pocket Z-level finished flat area. Uh, just, just on and on and on that you can go. But in this case, we're going to pick that uh, rough pocket, semi-finished slice, and then finish slice as our uh, feature parameters, okay? And we're just going to say insert, okay? And once we say insert, we're going to close it. Now you see here with the color coding that SolidWorks, or CamWorks is actually letting us know that nothing has been done to this other than been selected, okay? So the first thing we want to do here is we want to say, okay, we want to generate an operation plan and CamWorks will automatically generate the operation plan and will take us over to our operation tree. Not no longer our feature tree, but now our operation tree. And you see here that we have three different patterns. Now, nothing has been done to these yet, so we just want to right click now and tell it to generate toolpath. That takes just a few seconds for it to go through and generate this toolpath. And then once it finishes, we're going to be able to see through uh, lines and formats what kind of tool path that we're looking at, how that tool is supposed to travel on each one of these uh, features or each one of these tool paths, okay? So there's some things we need to clear up. First thing we need to do is we need to put some avoid areas in here. Uh, this is going to be multiple avoids and we just need to tell it that we need to avoid these areas. We don't need to cut those in any way, shape, or form. And yeah, I'm going to let it regenerate it. Each time that we make changes, it automatically regenerates. We'll do the same thing to the second one. 
add those avoid areas and we're making them multiple selecting those three faces and finishing and yes regenerating the tool path and then one last time by clicking inserting those avoid areas and multiple one two and three and finish and yes regenerate the tool path so now once we finish this we should be able to get a clear picture of how this tool path is going to proceed now i don't like the spiral in uh, approach so i want to go into this and i want to edit that definition okay and i'm going to take this uh, open operation parameters and i'm going to go into my uh, entry retract uh, actually i'm going to go into I'm going to go into my entry retract and I'm going to tell it instead of a spiral I want it to ramp in okay and yeah uh, 0.1 inch uh, 2 degrees that's fine that's fine click OK to accept that and yes I've got to redo it again let it go through that process and then we take a look at it again and it looks much better than it did before okay so we're looking at the next one it looks very good and then finally this one and it looks very good as well. So now all we have to do is say, let's see what it looks like as far as simulation is concerned. If we right click on here, we can actually simulate that tool path. Now we're gonna take and use our tool path simulation. We could go through it uh, tool mode, which is uh, step by step at the regular speed, or we can turn it to turbo mode. Now I'll put it on regular speed for the begin with, and we'll just let you show it what it's doing here. Uh, you can see that the first tool is kind of creating the hole in the void and then the next tools will come along behind it and we'll create the, uh, the rest of it. We're going to pause it there and close it and uh, we're going to try it again. This time we're going to do simulate it and tell it to go to turbo mode and go to end. And just in a few seconds you're going to see what, uh, what you wind up with. And there is your, your, uh, your meal, milled part that you've got there, your mold if you would. And you can see there that there's some grooves and stuff like that in there that really need some cleanup to it. And we can do that simply by going back and saying, let's edit that last, that finished cleanup. Edit that definition. Let's go into our XY step over. And let's, right now we've got a distance of a 0.05 on that step over. So let's change that to a 0.025 and see what that does whenever we regenerate that path and it takes just a few minutes and once it's finished it's already got the tool path run so all we have to do is say right click and simulate and we've got it set to turbo and click to the end now this time we should see more of a finished part than we do you see there that you can barely see it finished it off pretty good uh, pretty smooth there and uh, we got some issues there on some parts but we can go ahead back in there and finish those as well on the other parts now the next step of this process would be you say well what happens if you want to go in there and change a configuration can we do a configuration the same way or do we have to go through these steps again for the configurations that we created well let's just see if I go back to the configuration this one is the 31300 so let's take it back up to the 31297 Let's make that configuration active. Let's go back to our CamWorks feature tree. And CamWorks lets you know that, hey, this is a different configuration than what we had before. Do you want to change this configuration and recut it a different way? Do you want to add this configuration or do you just want to copy and show copy? Well, I just want to copy and show copy here. So click OK. And then it asks us, okay, the part is changed. Select full to rebuild all CamWorks data or light if changes do not affect the CamWorks data. Well, we want to change the full. And we want to allow it to run through the whole process again of rebuilding it, creating the tool path, and uh, setting up the operation plan. And then when we get to that point, you see this is my smaller version. I go right over to my operation tree, and I can right click here and say simulate that tool path turbo mode and click the end and you see there in just a few minutes that I actually have the smaller one milled as well so just that quick I can go from one configuration to the other and have the milled uh, code ready to go for my machining operation uh, out on the floor I hope this is uh, brought some answers to some questions for you as far as mold and cavity. I hope it's introduced you to, to uh, CamWorks and allowed you to see what it's uh, capable of doing and how easy it is to use. Uh, if you have any questions, you can contact us at 
835-6868. Or you can go and visit us on the website at www.secanttech.com. That's S-E-C-A-N-T-T-E-C-H.com. Hope you've enjoyed it.